was the most interesting way I've ever gotten a job in my entire life. Um, it was when this room was being built, the slip room was in exile, and uh, Eugene and I, um, we have this kind of a famous house in Park Slope, Brooklyn. We live in the longest continuously running communal house. We have a huge Halloween party every year. And while the slip room was closed, it freed up a Saturday night for James Kenny to come to the party. <laughs> and, um, you know, we have a, a, a brownstone with six other roommates um, in Park Slope, and it's a huge, crazy, wild party. So the roommates and I have to do door duty because, you know, people, random people walk in on the streets, and you kind of have to, you know, be a little judicious at the door. And Allie and James comes up and he's dressed as a big yellow banana. <laughs> and he's got a bunch of bananas in his hand. <laughs> and he comes up the door and he sees me. And I was, uh, I was dressed as a bar of soap. <laughs> A big white suit with a black string just circle all the way around. And he comes up to the door and goes, Hey, potassium, anyone? And I was like, I like that guy. And we were hanging out, we were talking, and at one point in the night, you know, we're smoking joints all night long. We're not just the party, you know. And at one point, I remember finding myself in this conversation with a group of people about why people from Georgia were degenerate because it was the penal colony. And, and after I was done with this story, he came up and, to me and goes, Hey, do you want a job, kid? And I was like, yeah, I can use a little part-time work. What you got in mind? And he was so vague about it. <laughs> he was like, well, you just, uh, you know, there's this place. This is a great place, slip room. You just come by and show up. You know, tell me what you think. And I was like, well, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and he was just so vague. He was just like, uh, next Friday night, show up. We're, we're going to reopen. And uh, I talked to Eugene afterwards, and I was like, "What's the, what was the deal with the banana guy? <laughs> he offered me a job. <laughs> so uh, I show up the first night, which was uh, my first night working, was shadowing James. Uh, the first night we reopened here, um, the early show was a concert, which is a singer-songwriter. And then all of a sudden, at 10 o'clock, <laughs> the subculture of humanity is just coming up the stairs, and they're all excited. But the guy's like singing the most sad song with a bottle of whiskey, and he's just singing like, the place is packed. But the people are coming in, and they're all excited. And it's, it's just kind of pandemonium, because this, this crowd has to leave, and that crowd has to come in. And I'm sitting, you know, trying to handle this, and he's trying to handle it. And seven years later, um, I'm here, and in those seven years, I've covered him four shifts. Seven years. And uh, two of those shifts was um, when he told me about this dream he had about his Uncle Pat. And he said, you know, Miles, I had this dream about... Uh, my Uncle Pat, and we're having a big family reunion in Ireland, and uh, he came to me in the dream and said, why aren't you going? I'm like, well, yeah, why aren't you going? And he goes, I just, I gotta ask you, this was the, the first time I ever covered him was one weekend. He goes, I, uh, can you cover me for this weekend? I'm like, absolutely, go to Ireland. Like, every, everything's under control. And, and then the other two times I covered him, um, I think he did like a number for the New York Burlesque Festival and uh, 
he showed up to do Uncle Earl here when I was working the door, and there was one very specific moment. The only time that James Kinney like ever slightly reprimanded me, you know? Uh, what you do? No, no, just it was, it was, it was so interesting. It was uh, like a real kind of uptight couple comes in and they're like, well, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth $10 to go upstairs? Like, you know, what I was like, absolutely, you know? And they pay the $10, they come up and they immediately walk out. I don't know what was happening on stage, but something. <laughs> And, uh, you know, literally 30 seconds later, they, they walked out, and there was a group of people here, and we were chatting, and then I saw this couple that just came in and asked if it was worth it, and they left. And I said, hey, what's up, guys? And the guy just threw up his hand and walked away. And James Kenny was there and a couple other people, and I turned to the people, I said, God, that guy was an asshole. And James Kenny says, don't ever say that. Um... People come and people go, and you got to keep the energy good here on the door. And this place isn't for everybody, and you're going to see that this place isn't for everybody, but don't ever call anybody an asshole. It's all about keeping the chi positive. Yeah. And, um, I don't, I don't know how James King died, but I know how he lived. And he was one of the most philosophical human beings I've ever met. He really lived it. It wasn't tongue in cheek. He was a monk. In, in all of his different facets of life. And at the Slipper Room, we got a, a big slice of the cake, and I know all his other slices got that slice too. And uh, what I can tell you guys, working the door on the weekends, is that there's so many people that he touched. There's so many, like, just little transient relationships that happen at that door where so many people in between when he died and now are just wondering where the old guy in the hat is. And, um, uh, there was one guy that, you know, being on the door here in the Lower East Side, there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of transient homeless types people that they come by and they're kind of looking at me on Friday and Saturday night, like, okay, you're here now. You're here the next weekend. And there was a guy in particular, his name's Tyrone. And he says, hey, what's up with the old guy? And I said, uh, sorry to tell you, but uh, he passed away. And he said, he, he just, he's, he burst out into tears. And he started crying. And being at the door, there's been so many little experiences like that where he was just so big and so meaningful to so many people. And I, I just love this guy so much. I could always go to him with, with anything concerning the job. or And he always had an answer, and it was always the right answer. And, and I'm going to miss him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.